Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to do is, as I mentioned before, is we want to make the paddle a little bit more rounded or have some edges so that it's, there is a little bit of a random element. Because right now everything, the ball just goes 45 degrees all the time and it, it will always go in that path uh, forever because there's no random value in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a game object, make that empty, and I'm just going to make this at 0, 0. So x is 0, y is 0. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to click enter, and I'm going to call this paddle parent. Okay. Now, right now, we've got the paddle down here, so if I can just find that. This is the paddle that we're actually using at the moment. What I want to do is I want to disable this script because I want this paddle parent to control the other objects. Now, let me, I'll just do it this way around. So if I grab the paddle parent and left click, hold it down, and then let go on the paddle, you can see now the paddle has come underneath the paddle parent. And what that what we say usually in code is that's a child, it's big, or... or in games or in, in editors we say it's now a child of the parent object so that's why I've actually called this paddle parent now at the moment the paddle parent isn't doing anything it's just an empty game object in the scene without any kind of functionality but what I want to do is I want to make this paddle parent the the main object okay and then have the paddle parts inside that parent object so again just to demonstrate it I'm going to uh, let me just find out which way to do this. So I'm going to go Command and C and Command and V or Command and C and or Control and C and Control and V if you're on a PC and that just copies and pastes the object. And as you can see I've just copied the paddle and it's still a child of this parent which is great. So if I click on the second paddle go over to this scene view over here and click F Remember, your scene view might be slightly arranged differently in, in the game inside of Unity, but I'm just looking for the scene uh, tab here. And if I click on W, I can move this over and just move it up slightly or down, it doesn't matter. And as you can see, now I've got two objects. Now, if I click play, I don't think we're going to get the right functionality at the moment. Ah, uh, there you can go. You see, we've got two paddles just underneath each other. And and the problem is what we we want to do is I want to create an object which has like a sort of one side like this and then one curve either side like this, so it's sort of like an, a curved pong paddle, okay? But the problem is that these both have scripts attached to them which make it move to where exactly the mouse is. So even this second one here, the one underneath, when I, I, if I click my mouse here, both pong paddles will go to the center of where my mouse was clicked. So we want to change that. And the way to change that is we want to disable this script, okay? So I'm just going to click on, this, on the left paddle at sorry, the second paddle that we made, click on this tick here for the paddle script and that will disable it. The first paddle, click on the tick and disable it. If I click play, let it run, nothing happens. So, we can, so this, the script is no longer functioning. It's basically been disabled. Okay, And the paddle parent, what we want to do is we want to get the paddle script and we want to apply it to that. Left click, let go. If I click play, Move it over. We can see there we go. The paddles are now, uh, how can you say, like they're they're both childs of the parent object, and they're moving as they were set. The position was set inside of the parent object. So they're not moving towards the mouse anymore because basically we've disabled this script. Now remember before what I said is you can actually delete these scripts out um, by, as I mentioned, for the particle system here. And I'm going to do that here just to demonstrate because we no longer need the paddle script to be part of this uh, of this paddle object because the script is now in the parent object and we only need one object to move the paddles left and right. So I'm just going to click on the paddle, click on this sort of settings cog here, remove component and the same for this one, remove component and it just makes things a little bit more cleaner I think. Um, I like to keep my inspector on this right hand side here pretty clean uh, just so there's nothing in there that I'm not that I forget about later. Okay, so what I want to do here is, like I said, I wanted to create a sort of curved paddle. Now, this first paddle, I'm going to just click enter and I'm going to call this paddle middle just so it's nice and clear. And this one, I'm going to make it the left paddle, so I'm going to call it paddle left. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to 
I'm going to click on this uh, z-axis, uh, I don't know how to say this, indicator here, just so that it's directly straight on in the 2D plane. We're not having any 3D here. And I'm going to click on R. I'm going to grab hold of the red axis and scale it in slightly. I'm going to click W, move it up, click E, and I'm going to left click and drag this, mm, I guess, to around roughly there. That should be okay. And I'm going to click on W and just position the corner, two corners, so they line up just like that. Okay. I'm going to click play just to test this. And what we should get if I can actually get it to bounce on that side paddle, if I can do that. It might come down this side in a moment. There we go. So as you can see, it bounces now at a different angle, which is great. That's exactly what we want. So that's the random element that I was talking about before. So I'm going to click on the paddle left here, click Command and C, then Command and V, or Control and C, Control and V on a PC. I'm going to click Enter, and I'm going to call this paddle right. Click on the paddle right, yeah, just make sure it's selected here on the inside of the hierarchy. Click on W and move this over. Actually, I'm just going to click Command and C and, or Control and Z to go back to undo. And I'm just going to move it on the rotate rotation first. Okay, so I'm clicking E. I'm left dragging the inner circle here. And I'm just going to drag this down to rotate it. And the reason that I'm rotating here on the left is because it's a little bit easier to get the same angle as the left-hand side paddle. I could use these values here in the rotation uh, and make that exact, and I encourage you guys to do this if you're going to release it. But I'm just doing a, a you know, sort of rough estimate visually of where it should be. Now I'm going to click on W and hold the right axis arrow and drag this over. Just move it down slightly. As you can see, the rotation wasn't perfect. Actually, I'm just going to rotate that. So click on E, rotate it slightly, and it uh, looks kind of okay. That's about right, I think, okay? Like I say, please be more accurate than I am in this. I'm just doing this for the tutorial. All right, so uh, let's just test this and try and get, yeah, there we go. So that bounced back in the opposite direction, which is correct. I think that hit the middle paddle then, possibly. There we go, and it bounced back in the opposite direction, which is right. Now, this paddle is huge at the moment, okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to left-click on the parent object, and whenever you change or position the parent object, you change and position the, the child of that parent object. And in this case, I'm going to scale it down so it's a little bit more difficult, because right now this is too big. So left-clicking on the parent, click on, and then uh, tap R, and I'm going to grab the middle axis, uh, sorry, the middle um, scale axis tool here, and I'm going to left click and drag. Now that's going in the air, that's okay, that's no problem. Um, the reason it's going in the air is because these paddles are actually situated lower than the parent object, which in this case I don't think is a problem, that should be fine. Uh, because the parent object I think is actually based more up in the Y axis. But for now, just click on the parent object, and I'm just going to scale this down a little bit, and that might be a little bit too small. It might be okay, but you guys have a play around with this, okay? I'm going to click left, uh, sorry, on, on W, and then I'm going to drag this down a little bit, okay? I'm just going to zoom out, hold on to Alt, left click and zoom around, uh, sorry, uh, rotate around by left clicking and moving the mouse. And I'm just checking that that's on the, it's still on the same plane, because when I scale there, it seemed to move up, and I wanted to make sure that it wasn't moving back and forth in the z-axis, because remember the ball just falls on the z-plane on zero, so the paddle has to be in the same line as the ball so that it does bounce off the paddle, okay? And as you can see here, it's in the same, uh, it's in the same uh, zero on the z-axis. If I click on play, all right, so we're moving left and right with the paddle, that's fine. There we go, and it's bouncing around just fine. And we're getting that sort of more random element now. Uh, and the reason I say random element is because we never know if the player is going to... The player might catch the ball on the left side, or as you can see there, it's just sort of skewed off. They might catch it on the left side, they might catch it on the right side. And 
you know, so that's more of a, a player sort of changing the the randomness of the game. And I think that's a much better element to include. It's a good element to include in any game, of course. All right. So I think that's it, guys, for now. Let me just, uh, I think, check my notes. But what I would say is that for, for you know, child and parent objects inside of Unity are very useful. And from most of the games that I've built, they are pretty much essential. We always need these. Sometimes they are used, like in this case here, we've used it to make the, the paddle walls a child of a single object. And therefore, we only need to move the parent objects. We don't need to move all of the child objects. So anything that you do to the parent happens to the child, the children as well, which is very, very useful. So in this case, we're moving left and right, and we only need to move that parent object. When when we did inside the editor there was we scaled everything, but we didn't need to scale all of the all the sides of the paddle. We just needed to scale the parent, and then the paddles themselves got scaled. What I would encourage you to do as well is to play around with these with these paddles and and make something interesting. You know. Um, you can add a, a sphere, you can add a, a cube, you can add some other plane or a different object if you wanted to import that. Uh, or, or just make a completely different shape altogether. So for example, if I just control and V or control and V control and sorry, control and V, control and C to to paste and uh, to copy and paste, and then move this up. And then if I did the same on the left side, control and V, control and C, or command and V and command and C then we're getting a sort of sad face paddle but we're adding something different there you know uh, it's kind of more of a spacey looking thing now I guess like a ship you know and, and it's kind of with the theme I suppose of Pong and you know I'm always like I said I'm inspired by Tron so guys have a play around with it you know uh, the other thing as well is add some kind of particle effect if you want to try that of course you know try adding like a particle effect to this object here you can go game object to create other particle system and then make that a child of the paddle and then as you move the paddle you can actually have like a trail that follows the paddle around that that might be a pretty cool effect so definitely I encourage you guys to play around a little bit uh, and see what you come up with you know uh, and as always I think uh, one of the guys uh, left a link for the pong tutorial as they had built it and edited it so far and they left the website in one of the comments which is really cool so Thank you for giving that comment. I think that's really, it's great to see, you know, what you guys have done with the tutorial and how it's, how you've worked on it or changed it or how you've made something yourselves. So, you know, please always comment. And if you make something or publish something, let us know. It'll be great to see. Um, the other thing is as well, guys, you know, as always, please tap on the like button down there. Just, just one click. That's really, really helpful. It helps YouTube to increase our rank or whatever. Uh, please leave a comment and please subscribe. This this really really helps to support us. So you know, thanks in advance for doing that, guys. But for now, I'm going to be back and I'm going to do more videos. I'm going to continue this tutorial, of course, because the game is very far from finished so far. Uh, the other videos that I'm going to do hopefully soon as well will include things on the business of mobile games and how to make money with mobile games. It won't be a tutorial, but more of a discussion of how how you make money in the mobile world on iPhone and, and Android for mobile games and that should be pretty interesting it's kind of aimed at beginners and intermediates so that one should be live pretty soon so check it out subscribe to the channel and then you'll get that updated uh, you'll know when that comes out but for now guys you know happy developing and I will speak to you all soon okay bye